Hello and welcome to Story Radio, the podcast for readers, writers and lovers of literature everywhere. Today we're listening to Outing, written and read by Simon Roberts. Mum Jesus! This car's crap and Mum can't even fucking drive. Gaz has put a sticker on the rear window. Maniac on board. Thought we could go to Margate, she says. That was a fucking red light. Language? In the silence she keeps giving me these stupid looks. Don't you want to know why we're going? Yes, but I don't say anything. Jason, what? She asks again, don't I want to know why? And I still don't say anything. So she says my name again, except really loud. And I fall for it and say why equally loud. I thought it'd be nice, she says. Nice. I know Gaz has put me on the insurance says I can do a big shop every so often, but I thought, you know, as it's nice, we could go to the seaside. Make a nice change from Wandsworth. Nice, nice, fucking nice. Gaz is her boyfriend. Denim, mullet, this crap car. Lisey doesn't treat me like a kid. Mum, I might have had something on. Like what? You haven't got college today? Something. What, like a date? Jace? I twist round in my seat so my back's to her. I stare at the traffic passing by on the inner lane. I can't believe she's tricked me into this. It's not far, Jace. How far's that? Couple of hours. Jesus. I should have known something was up when I'd shut the boot after putting in the bags for life. She was doing a ta-da outside the front door. What do you think? Oh, Jace, don't give me that look. Why are you wearing a dead leopard? It's leopard print. Get in a car. Once in, I could smell she poured a vat of perfume over herself, so I started coughing and wound down the window. You might be 18, Jace, but... But you're not too old for a bloody good hiding. I asked her why she got herself tarted up for Mr Asda, only she took a right instead of a left. Asda's can wait, she said. Come on, Arlene, oh, I swear what I mean at this moment. You mean everything. What the fuck? Wakey, wakey, Jason. Welcome to sunny Margate. Pissing down. Come on, Arlene. Oh, I used to love this. Can't fucking drive. Can't fucking sing. Turn it off. She breaks hard at a red and I jerk against the seatbelt. Fuck's sake. Think you're about to get lucky, Jace. She flashes me a look, then nods and smiles past me. There's a girl about my age at the wheel of the car next to us, grinning at me with tombstone teeth covered in pink lipstick, like someone's broken into a cemetery with a spray can. Cooey, my son likes you. Oh, fuck, Mum, please, no. Green. Tooth monster takes a left. Thank fuck. Could have been in there, Jace. Car behind us beeps. She grates the car into gear. Right up my arse, he's been. Glares at him in the mirror as we drive along the seafront. Wanker. Phone. Nothing. Dead phone in a dead town. Does the crapmobile have a charger? How would I know? What do you need a charger for? What do you think I need a fucking charger for? Your language, honestly. Watch out for P signs. That's P for parking. What the fuck am I doing in this dump? We're the only people in the calf. She's ploughing away through a cheese omelette, salad and chips drowned in vinegar. The salad's got sicky bits of sweet corn in it. Her coffee's in a tall glass mug. It looks like a cat shit milkshake. Sure you don't want anything? Yes. Don't be such a misery, Jace. I stab my finger at the window as the rain scratches against it and ask her what she expects me to be. She tells me it's lovely in the summer when she and Brian used to come here. It's winter, I say, and who the fuck's Brian? It'll buck up later, she says quickly. I checked. I push my chair back. Where are you going? Charger. I get to the counter and Mum shouts at me to get her a doughnut. I ask the guy for a doughnut and a charger. The doughnut's already charged up, he says. Fucking hilarious. 
Do you or do you not have a charger? I do indeed have a charger. Would sir care for the use of my charger? Yes, please. And Peter fucking K wraps the charger around the donut. There you go, sir. Back at the table, I connect the charger to my phone and plug it in at the wall. Mum speaks through a gobful of sugar and jam. Who do you need to phone? Social services. Give over. Is it your date? Mum! I can tell she's giving me looks again, even though I'm staring down at my phone. There's enough charge, so I start texting. I thought it might help with your course. Jace? What? I thought it might help. What might? Coming here. What, this calf? Stupid, I meant Margate. She tells me it's very popular with artists. All the hippie stars like it here. Hippie stars, hipsters. I thought coming here would inspire you. What, to move here so I can get away from you? Jace. Incoming text. What are you doing in Margate? It's where it all started, Mum says suddenly, like she's replying to the text. Margate, it's in your bones, Jace. And I look up at her. This is where I met him. Who? Your dad. Gaz? No, your real dad. What, here? Here, on this bench. The exact same bench. Sun's out. A long street like a ribbon of glass. We've stopped on the front near Dreamland. Bin next to the bench is spewing empty Polish beer cans. Dreamy. Me and some of my girlfriends were on a hen weekend. Your dad was with a bunch of mates on a stag do. I'd been on one of those rides and come over queasy, so I came here for a sit down. When I opened my eyes, this bloke had parked himself next to me. Oh yeah. All suited and booted, bit snazzy but tasteful with it. Gold identity bracelet, good teeth. Sounds well dodgy. No, Jace, he was nice. What's the word? Solicitous. Soliciting, more like. She loses it. Gets really knocked. She hardly ever gets knocked. Stuff like, how dare I, and he was your dad, and show some fucking respect, and... I brought you all this way because it's important you know and snap out of it, you moody little git. An old woman walking her dog stops to watch, only mum has a go. What are you looking at? Fuck off! The woman fucks off. So does the dog. Mum orders me to sit. I sit. Another text. Let her wait, she barks as I reach for my phone. She sits next to me but leaves a space between us. I give her a sideways glance. She's staring ahead, face hard as a cliff. I hear the snap of her handbag, a rummaging inside, the desperate clawing at cellophane, card and paper. We've been going out for about a year when we came back here. Click. Puff. I thought you'd given up. We came just for the night. You promised me and Gaz. Don't you even want to know who he was, Jason? What he did? Not particularly, which he takes as a yes. Tells me his name was Brian and he was an electrician from Basildon. Fuck me. Come on down, Brian from fucking Basildon. You were conceived here, she says. Here? Where we're sat? Here? Here. And then a couple of years later, we came back again. With you. He said he had something to tell us. You and me. You and Puzzled and Brian had sex on this bench. Did you hear what I just said, Jason? But how? I mean, wasn't it very... And I mean, didn't anyone... Well, it was after dark and it was a bit tricky to start with, but I had his jacket to sit on and once he got the angle right and we got a rhythm going... Mum! You did ask... I watch the sea's fingers grabbing the shore, pouring its hem. Well? she asks. Well, what? What do you suppose he wanted to tell us when we came back?
tell me and you. And I know what she's going to say. But when she does say, I immediately forget I expected her to say it. I get up. I walk down to the water's edge. The sun is flashing his torchlights on the scuffed surface of the sea. She's suddenly standing next to me. A 99, complete with flake and raspberry sauce, appears in front of my face. It's not really ice cream time of year, but the sun's out now and we are at the seaside. Go on. I take it. It was your dad's favourite. Try holding it in your left hand. Why? Because you might like it better than your right. Some people do, Jason. Fuck me. They discover that they just do. Like your dad, Jace. Another text. She's keen. Aren't you going to text her back? Jace? Jason? Here you have it. I give her back the 99. I head back to the bench and sit down. Put my shades on. Close my eyes behind them, stretch my legs forward, thrust my hands deep into my pockets. When I open my eyes again, Mum's still there on the sand. A gust of wind staggers across the front, pulling at the tails of her special coat and breathing all over her special scent. She stays as still as the wind will allow her to. Then she gently tosses the 99 into the sea. She comes back to the bench. She sits closer to me than she did before. Snap, rummage, rustle, click, puff. He's all the way out there somewhere. I whip off my shades and look at her, stunned. What, drowned? You mean he drowned himself? She turns to face me. No, I mean he's in France. He's out there in France. That's where he's living. Fucking hell, Jason. We sit there in silence for a while. How did you take it? Him coming out like that, I ask. How do you think I took it? Her expression is dictionary definition serious. What do you think I did, Jason? I shrug. I held him. Held on to him while he cried his bloody eyes out. Held him close. That's what I did. Not what you expected me to say, is it? You'd have liked some fireworks, wouldn't you? Some melodrama, something you could make a picture out of. Hey, Jason. No, I... No? No. She keeps on looking at me. I turn away. You had to know about him sometime, she says eventually. And with you being 18 now, I thought... I mean, he did tell you himself. He told us both. But you were only little at the time. I turn back to her. How did I react? She takes a long drag on her cigarette before dropping it and squashing the life out of it beneath her shoe. I'll tell you how you reacted, Jason. You gurgled. The moment he said what he had to say, you started gurgling. She points to a spot in front of me. You were there. Right there in your pushchair. You were happy, Jason. Happy? Happy as a sand boy that day. She's got the key in the ignition. You won't tell Gaz, will you? She says. About Dad? About me smoking? No. I put my hand in my right pocket, then my left. Find my gum. Offer her a piece. Take one for myself. We chew for a bit. What time's your date? Seven. Better get you to the church on time, hadn't we? On the motorway, she wants to know if the date has a name. Nick. A bit later, she asks. Is that short for anything? Like Nicola? Or Nicholas? My eyes flick past the lorries, the vans, the coaches. 
are the cars with their drivers and passengers, boots for their booty, brains for their baggage. Does it matter? Not as long as you're happy, Jace. Long as they make you happy. Long as you make them happy. Yeah? Yeah. Closer to home, I tell her she still smells of perfume, but also of soggy chips and salty air and sneaky cigarettes. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. No, I like it. It's nice. I mean it. And I do. That was Outing, written and read by Simon Roberts. If you're enjoying our volunteer-led podcast, please consider donating. You'll find our links to Patreon and PayPal on our website, storyradio.org. Thanks for listening, and goodbye.